Hello everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger and today we're going to be talking about our two storms that are out in the Atlantic. One is now Tropical Storm Humberto and that is located right here. You can see it is a tropical storm eventually forecasted to be a category three hurricane and also another tropical wave is now just to the west of Puerto Rico near the Dominican Republic and Haiti interacting with the mountains in this area. So it's going to take a little bit of time for it to organize but once it does our models have shifted way to the east on where this system could possibly go and now we're talking about folks in north carolina south carolina and georgia need to be keeping an eye on this storm and even florida maybe for some wave impacts with a close approach from what will eventually be future tropical storm or hurricane imelda but a lot of our models are starting to agree on strength as well now if we zoom into umberto you can see that it does have a pretty healthy amount of thunderstorm activity mainly pushed off on the eastern side of our storm right now our circulation is still embedded back down in here over the next couple of days we are expecting it to go northwest and eventually take a little bit more of a turn to the west and then as it does that it's going to be continuing to get closer and closer to our next tropical wave which is back over here which you can see it is also producing a decent amount of thunderstorm activity as well near Santo Domingo here near the Dominican Republic and you can see that there's a lot of thunderstorm activity we're also expecting a lot of flooding out over here as these mountains are going to cause something that we call orographic lift which is basically the mountains they kind of treat this storm like a towel and they wring it out making a mess all over the place and unfortunately in this scenario the Dominican Republic is going to be the sink in which that towel gets wrung out over you guys need to be watching out for some of that flooding and potentially even catastrophic flooding there and that flooding threat will make its way to the east coast as well if this storm really does come in so let's go ahead and look at our models but before we get started i want you guys to test out the strength of your phone screens and smash that like and subscribe button as it does help us grow and reach more people because this is the time where we need to reach more people we actually have a storm out there so also consider sharing this stream sorry video as well first off let's continue to check where these storms are and what the water temperatures are around these storms you can see that we do have 29 to 30 degrees Celsius temperatures out around both of our storms right now. So they're definitely going to have enough warm water to intensify. But the interesting thing about future Imelda is going to be the fact that after it gets past the Dominican Republic and into the Bahamas is where our juiciest warm water is going to be. And then if it does approach the South Carolina area or the North Carolina area or Georgia, this is also where our furthest north warm water temperatures are. You can see there's this little stream of warm water, and this is basically the Gulf of Mexico waters that are getting transported out and then moved up to the north. And that allows for some warmer waters to kind of pool up in this area. So this is really not the area you want to see a storm go over. Also around the coast, you can see that there is some cooler waters just off of the coast. So last minute rapid intensification should be off the table because of that but given the speed that this storm will be moving it'll probably hold its intensity into land now looking in our highs and lows out there which are going to be depicting where this storm could potentially go we are going to have a low pressure system out over here in the united states it's eventually going to be pushing down to the south and east as both of our systems try to develop you see umberto just kind of peeking in on the bottom right here and that kind of moves up and you can also see that this model is depicting our other wave as well basically we're going to have a high pressure system out over in the atlantic that is going to be steering our storms generally west northwest and then this low pressure system over here is going to be kind of directing our storm potential future Amelda closer and closer to the United States and you can see as I push this forward even the GFS is now calling for landfall of this system now it has it making landfall over there into Georgia and South Carolina and folks this is only about five days out where this storm is at our coast so again we are in the range of accuracy this is not la la land anymore and we really need to be starting to take this storm seriously because if it's a hurricane it's definitely going to have some pretty significant impact the interesting thing about the GFS run though is at least in the upper levels you really don't see much Fujiwara effect which is why our system doesn't get slung shot our systems remain close and are further enough apart to kind of not really interact too much with each other meaning they're both going to be directed by the subtle forces that are in their area for future Amelda it's going to be this lower pressure down here in the southeast and for Humberto it's going to be that higher pressure in the weakness of the high pressure it's going to allow it to sneak up to the north now if we look at the euros depiction here you can see the euro develops this storm and moves this storm a lot quicker and into land a lot 
faster and that is because our high pressure systems kind of lopsided and this low pressure system is also a little bit stronger grabbing our tropical wave or tropical storm by this point and then slinging it up to the north a lot quicker increasing that distance between both of our hurricanes meaning less Fujiwara effect and more confidence in an east coast strike also this will help our forecasting confidence as well because things get really complex when two storms interact and you get that Fujiwara effect which is basically storms start to rotate around each other but in this instance it seems like our models are starting to lock onto the scenario that our storm develops and moves a lot quicker than we previously thought interacting with that low pressure separating the distance which is important important now another very important thing to keep in mind is where our dry air is because this is really going to show what kind of tropical system we're going to get where a lot of our rain is going to be and you can see a lot of our humidity here on the euro model is going to be centered on the northern portion of this storm so we're definitely going to have a lopsided storm as it moves in to the united states you can see the lot of dry air pushing down over into the southeast over florida kind of wrapping around that center while humberto doesn't really seem to have a problem with that look at that humberto's looking like a a category four hurricane out there thankfully forecasted to move away from us but you can see that the dry air is going to wrap the storm is going to interact with a trough and that is actually going to kick off its strengthening as it moves closer to the coast looking at the euro ai model you can also see that it brings us very close to the coast but a little interesting thing on the ai model is that these storms are a lot closer together you can see they actually start interacting you can see how these two lines kind of connect here and it looks kind of like an infinity sign now that is the two storms interacting at the surface and the interesting thing to note here is as soon as they start doing that watch this before that you meld up we're getting really close to the coast of Florida looking like it's going to go into South and North Carolina and then you see this little hourglass figure form and then all of a sudden you see this thing tug off to the east but there still is a chance that our storms interact with each other and that could push our storm off of the coast so it's still not a 100% guarantee that we get landfall impacts but chances are certainly going up and the way that we determine in those chances is by looking at our ensembles so let's go do that next so first starting off with our euro ensembles you can see at least starting off here with humberto definitely a lot of confidence at least on this model for category four maybe getting close to a category five strength hurricane off of the coast and then it becomes a fish storm probably pretty similar to what aaron did but you can see over here with potentially future imelda the euro is still very bullish on our storm coming up into the east coast and this is actually the best case scenario you can see a lot of these lines are blue and like dark blue and green as they come into the United States indicating that there is definitely a chance that we could have a weaker system if the euro is correct but there are still some lines that are making impact with lands that are orange which is 70 knots and above that's hurricane strength potentially getting close to category two strength and even a red line right there as well we also have a couple stragglers out over here into Florida that for now remains a low probability track but it's still something to keep an eye on we start to see a lot more of our models stray further to the west then we're definitely going to have to note that in our latest forecasts and the GEFS model on the other hand has been super stubborn with this system even forming but you, now you can see that it is got a lot more members of Imelda potentially forming and those members are also further to the west you can see it has some members going into South Carolina and also some members going into North Carolina with a select few going off to the east but most of them and the majority of them are making it into the east coast of the United States now here's another AI model that we have this is one of the Google deep mind ensembles and you can see that it is a lot more bullish on the strengthening of this storm with potentially even hitting major hurricane status as it moves into the United States and you know this isn't too far-fetched of an idea we just get a little bit of that relaxing of the shear and this storm can try to strengthen there's plenty of warm water underneath it and initially there will be plenty of moisture meaning that as long as that shear relaxes this thing could definitely strengthen right before it comes into the Carolinas and you can see that it is pretty confident here on it coming somewhere in between South Carolina and North Carolina so that's three ensembles that have the majority of their models pushing this into the United States we have one more this is another deep mind model this is kind of similar to the euro in terms of weakness but you can also see it also agrees on impacts into South and North Carolina so the confidence guys is really growing here for some United States impacts now again as we have seen on some of our deterministic runs like the 
Euro AI model. It's not a guarantee. We could see this thing interact with Humberto. And if that does happen, then there's a higher likelihood that this kind of curves away. But the fact that we're seeing all of our ensembles all at once shift closer and closer to the United States is definitely concerning. So we definitely have to continue to keep an eye on this storm. So again, if this is a hurricane into the Carolinas, this could be bad. Now, another thing that I want to highlight here on our deterministic models is the fact that how long future Imelda stays over land here. You can see all this green as it moves into the United States. That's going to be a lot of moisture and a heck of a lot of rain. And it just kind of sits in the same area. It doesn't really hit the United States and then move too quickly. You can see a lot of that moisture and precipitation just kind of stays in the same area for a long time. Not only that, it seems like we could get a double whammy as soon as that dries up from another trough coming into the United States too, bringing some more moisture into the area. So some of our models are indicating here a little bit early that we could have some potential major to catastrophic flooding with Imelda as well. So that's going to be something that a lot of folks, especially over here, the Appalachians, what were hit hard by Helene, need to be thinking about. Again, if this thing comes just like this, right around October 1st, that orographic lift is going to be maximized again near those mountains, causing a lot of that rain to be kind of squeezed out of the atmosphere. It could get ugly. Come over to the Euro model. It also says something similar, mainly over there into like North Carolina and into Virginia. You can see this makes a very close approach or direct impacts to those Appalachia areas out over here in North Carolina. And not only that, it just kind of stalls after it does that. It doesn't really move around too much. And we're really seeing the potential here for some major, major flooding if this is the case because again it's still a pretty strong system which means the orographic lift as it pushes against the Appalachian Mountains is going to be pretty intense I mean, a lot of rain could fall in a short amount of time so we definitely got to keep an eye not only on the potential coastal impacts but also the inland impacts not to mention this thing is going to have a lot of dry air wrapping around it as we were talking about it before and usually when that happens we see a tornado threat develop on the northeastern quadrant and you can even sometimes get strong tornadoes when you have that drier air working its way around the center as it kind of creates a pseudo dry line and with all that spin in the atmosphere we could also be talking about a tornado threat potentially a pretty significant tornado threat with this storm as well so to summarize we're gonna have a lot of moisture over the Appalachians a lot of rain could be possible possible if it takes this exact track so we've got to keep an eye on these kind of tracks here and also most of our models like the euro and the gfs as landfall happens sneaks some dry air in there which is going to help with a tornado threat not only that as this storm makes landfall there's going to be high winds power outages storm surge near the coast coastal flooding you think of storm surge it's kind of a confusing term but you can think of storm surge as like a slow motion tsunami tsunamis come in it brings all the water levels up all at once storm surge or a slow motion tsunami brings in those waters gradually but the peak height can be pretty high depending on how strong or how low the low pressure is of the storm now in terms of the united states right now we do have this low pressure system which by the way if we see it really start to wrap up down here into the south and stall out that's going to be the steering current to bring potential future Imelda closer into the Carolinas but this trough is currently ejecting off to the north and east and that's going to bring some potential for some tornadoes out over here on the east coast close to New England today but mostly all the weather around that is going to be pretty marginal in terms of its severity now if we come over to our model runs for today and look at our upper level winds especially out over here in the eastern United States you can see that we are going to see a trough eject up into the northeast at a, in between like 11 and 4 p.m. That's it's going to allow those wind vectors to spread apart that forcing to happen and also for storms to get going if you look at our lower level winds also at this time you can see that they also eject into the area probably at around like 3 to 4 5 p.m and those are pretty strong lower level winds now the good news is is when you have a this kind of disorganized of a trough, a lot of these winds are going to be parallel. When the winds are parallel from the upper levels down to the lower levels, that usually doesn't mean a whole lot of spin, mainly a damaging wind threat. But if we do get any instances, like maybe some offshore wind off the coast interacting with some of our storms, we could definitely see a little bit more of that perpendicularity and a little bit more spin and also the chances for tornadoes. One of the things that is kind of lacking out here is going to be the instability, but there are going to be some pockets up there where some instability will exist we do have a little 
sliver here of around 900 to almost a thousand joules per kilogram worth of cape which is enough to sustain tornadic activity and given the shear environment if we do get some more perpendicular winds we could see a couple of brief tornadoes out here now coming over to our future radar you can see that as we get into around 4 p.m as both of those troughs are starting to eject our instability starts to build up you can see that we do have some storms starting to fire from baltimore all the way up into southern new york even some storms down here in Virginia, all the way down into North Carolina, into the Georgias, and also Southern Alabama as well. Those will be severe, not really much of a tornado threat, but closer to our low pressure system and that ejecting lower level uh, jet, you can see that we could have maybe one or two storms kind of pop up in a more discreet fashion. And those would be the storms that could become tornadic if the winds are favorable for it. This is kind of near the coast, maybe not close enough to get those coastal winds, but again, not a super elevated threat given the lower amounts of instability but if a storm can get going definitely got to watch out up here for some brief tornadoes so by 5 p.m our storms are pretty much at their peak and then after that they really start to fall apart maybe still could have some storms south of albany by 9 p.m and as we go into 11 p.m just a lot of rain and thunder for up here into vermont new hampshire and maine now if we come over and look at our severe weather risk you can see that for today it is a marginal risk from georgia all the way up into pennsylvania new jersey going into new york massachusetts and also connecticut the main threat here is going to be damaging winds not really talking about too much of a hail threat but you can see we do have a five percent chance for some damaging winds and also our tornado threat we do have right in that little corridor where we have some instability those upper level and lower level winds overlapping we do have a corridor here of a two percent tornado risk not super elevated but if things are looking a little bit more favorable as we go throughout the day it wouldn't completely surprise me if we did get like a small five percent out here so definitely be aware today a brief tornado we're not talking about big tornadoes up there but a brief tornado could definitely Definitely be possible if something gets going out there. Now, in terms of day two, we could be seeing some severe weather back over here in Arizona and New Mexico. But other than that, country really starts to dry out after this trough comes through. And then our focus really starts to shift over to the tropics. But yeah, folks, that's going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.